All right, everybody, welcome back to a new Bitcoin video. Um, today, let's go dive straight into the Bitcoin chart. And of course, let me actually open Twitter here as well. Uh, what is happening? Well, we had this, of course, this huge and huge amazing move to the upside. And this was about here from the bottom, about like 8%, something like that, maybe a little bit more, maybe like even like 10%. And what actually happened is we came back down here for a bit. We're down like about 4% right now, uh, but we're still trading here above the support. Now, why did this happen? Well, I said this in the last video, we got the CPI data coming in. It was higher than expected, uh, but actually what you can actually see is that things like stock markets and as well Bitcoin here was actually testing very strong support. And I think that it was kind of a bit, a little bit of an overreaction. People are right now a little bit overreacting on news. And so you actually saw the price coming back to the upside and a lot of shorts actually getting liquidated and now we're coming back down because we, well, we went up so quickly so a lot of people probably went long here thinking that this was officially going to be the bottom and then of course they get stopped out again um so we're kind of going sideways here we're not doing uh, that much interesting actually if i go here and i open actually buy bit you can actually see i did actually manage to open a long and i added a little bit to it uh, i did add it a little bit too quickly to my long position so I don't have such a great advantage anymore, but I opened like a very small position right over here. I wish I added more, uh, looking how, how far this chart has gone here to the upside. Um, but basically, yeah, I saw this overreaction to the news and I was like, yeah, I mean, it's probably going to reverse here back to the upside because it really didn't seem to me that we were going to break towards uh, to support just like that, just because of some small CPI print. So everything very quickly reversed here back to the upside. And now because of, of course, because CME marks are closed, uh, we are just going sideways because, well, during the weekends, we always go sideways until the CME markets open again. Um, so a lot of people are saying, is this the bottom? Uh, I mean, it may be, but one of the most interesting trends that I've been watching here is actually this trend line right over here. This one is going to be quite important, I think. I think we're kind of like really forming here in pennant kind of pattern we're really like squeezing in between this triangle and one of the things that does scare me a little bit is that we had something quite similar over here um let me actually go into the bitstamp chart we still had a triangle trading kind of over here and we did broke this here to the downside so i would be a little bit careful about these triangles you know maybe it turns you very bullish thinking that we've already hit the bottom but i will actually say out that there is a little bit of a warning here that if we do break this to the upside well, things can go very quickly south for Bitcoin, uh, but still, I don't actually believe that is going to be the case. I'm still quite a, a Bitcoin bull. And if I actually go to Twitter, you can actually see uh, that yesterday we got some very potentially bullish news for Bitcoin. And that is that the US Treasury has asked major banks whenever it should buy back some government bonds in order to improve market liquidity. Uh, now, why? What, what exactly does this mean? Well, basically very simple is that there's not enough liquidity in the market right now in the bond market and that if if the fed uh, or well the treasury would want to buy back here these bonds because right now nobody's buying these bonds and bond yields are spiking that that would likely uh, mean some kind of yield curve control which is very similar to kind of quantitative easing which means further devaluation of currency and uh, one of the reasons why Bitcoin has gone so down so quickly is because yields are spiking liquidity is being sucked out of the system and people are too afraid to buy risk assets and risk assets is kind of like bitcoin but as well like you know equities like stock markets like think about all the tech stocks that went like you know that doubled like in value during the corona pandemic and so a lot of people are very scared to invest in, in these risk assets and of course because the whole market kind of correlated with each other you're seeing that bitcoin is going to the downside very similar to stocks um, but what you're actually seeing here is that maybe we're going to see that the money printer is soon going to be turned on again again i'm very very surprised um, that the central bankers have made it so far uh, tapering here the system tapering the economy things are absolutely breaking i mean if you just look at the japanese yen how far this one is getting crushed right now but um, you know you can look here at the japanese yen here versus usd but you can look at um, for instance as well like the why why is this let me remove this oh and you can look here at the great british pound um you can look here at well this currency has been completely collapsing oh this is not the great british pound where is the great well you can look at the great british pound yield and that pretty much says you enough uh things everywhere are breaking the euro is breaking yen is breaking the great british pound are is breaking and the dollar is right now way too strong um 
So, well, they were trying to fight inflation here. And I really told you guys that they weren't going to try. They weren't going to be able to, going to be able to control inflation with increasing interest rates. Um, inflation hasn't even been going down. It has barely been going down. It has just been kind of going sideways. Um, but ap apparently, you know, this this was going to fix inflation. Well, again, CPI, even though it's highly manipulated, is still not going down, and things are already breaking in the system, which was my whole prediction. My whole prediction was, well, things are going to break in the system. And when, when everything starts breaking in the system, inflation is not going to be in, in the control. And so what we're going to see is we're going to see slight decrease here of inflation. So we're going to see a sl slight bump down. So basically you see inflation has gone parabolic. So they started printing money right over here. Then it took a little bit of you know, time to, for that money to cycle through the economy. And so eventually what you're seeing there right now is that inflation is likely going to tip, uh, a peak. And right, we're somewhere here around this level. So we're going to see some kind of a peak of inflation. We're coming a little bit down and this will likely mean again some kind of a fat pivot when inflation is slowly going to be down that's when the fed's likely going to pivot and they're going to say like hey we have just fought inflation and then we're going to start try to start printing money again because the economy will likely go extremely bad and then you're going to look at a second wave of inflation and this is kind of how warimer republic actually spoke about hyperinflation a lot of people think that hyperinflation is just something like this that just goes straight to the upside that's not true it actually goes through many of these waves where you high inflation, maybe periods of deflation. And it kind of goes like Bitcoin, very volatile to the upside because there's periods where, where there's high inflation. And so this during the Weimar Republic where the government tried to stop inflation, tried to decrease inflation. They had all sorts of policies in place to decrease inflation. But you actually see that none of that eventually worked because when you're on a fiat system like that and when you are in a situation like Weimar Republic was here or Germany uh, about 100 years ago, you could see that you can't really fight it by trying to come up with all these weird policies and try to print more money. So I think we are somewhere here around the inflation level. I think we're slowly peaking out here. And my prediction is that we're going to come back down. We're going to have some kind of a nice period here, probably one to two years where Bitcoin's likely going to go up. We're going to see some kind of quantitative easing. And then eventually something's likely going to break. And we are going to be looking at our next level of quantitative, uh, quantitative, quantitative easing. What a lot of people have to understand here is that the inflation that we are right now seeing is not going to go away. So the inflation is probably going to decrease a little bit, but what you will see is that the housing market, but you know, food price and everything like that will continue to put pressure on people. And I think that maybe you're going to see prices come down a little bit, but especially for one to two years will be very, very tough. And then eventually we're going to look at our next wave of inflation. And so um, if you look at what has happened here since the 2008 crisis, you're actually seeing that more and more Americans are living like paycheck to paycheck. And this is all the result because of all the money printer. The government can say whatever they want that inflation is 2%, but just look at how much the middle class has decreased in America. And you're going to see this continuing and continuing. And so the best way to protect yourself is Bitcoin. And it has outperformed everything for the last 10 years. And so I think that if you want to continue to maintain your lifestyle, continue to travel, continue to do all sorts of things, then you should buy Bitcoin. And I posted this video here and uh, here on Twitter, which I actually showed you. I was just chilling here in Japan. Uh, on a nice little mountain overlooking the city of Nagasaki and that's where I'm currently at and I basically told you guys yeah if you want to travel if you want to do stuff Bitcoin is the way out of this current system and so continue to hold it will all be all right things are already breaking and uh, yeah inflation will likely come down a little bit the Fed's going to pivot but you know they're going to pivot when inflation is barely going to be decreased and so it means that the inflation that's right now currently still in the system is going to continue to be in the system is going to continue to press on the middle class like the inflation has been doing here for the last 10 years and what you're going to see is that the next spike in inflation is probably going to be one to two years because look how much the system has been broken it's going to take a lot of liquidity to try to fix it again and by the time inflation will again spike to the upside and and bitcoin again it's a very volatile asset it will go up and go down and it will go up and go down uh, but in one year or six months from now we will not be trading around this level anymore and will likely be trading on the upside um, now do be a little bit wary about this Penance could break to the downside. I mean, I mean, I don't really care so much anymore. Uh, you know, dump it to 10K, I'll buy more. Pump it to 30K, I'll be rich. Do whatever you want, Bitcoin, but I'm just going to wait. I'm just going to hold and everything will be right. So this was the end of the video. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to like and subscribe. I hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.